Hello everyone, this is Mikey Garcia. Yo, it's your boy, the odd guy himself, Malik King Scott. Hi, I'm Charlie Edwards. This is Fast Eddie Chambers, and you're listening to the Box Hard Podcast with my main man, Joey Coastman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second edition of the Box Hard Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Coastman. Today, we have got preview and review, as we do every week. And also today, we have a very, very special guest, Peter Fury. Uh, today, there's been a lot of a lot of speculation. There's been a lot of drama in the last week or so. We've got Peter Fury here to clear up everything for us. All the listeners, welcome back once again. Today, I'm joined, as always, by my panel member, my good friend, Ayaz Sumra. Ayaz, how are you doing? I'm good, Joey. How are you? Very good, very good. Okay, let's get into this show. Peter, um, today there's been an announcement that the fight has been rescheduled for the 28th of November. Um, how did this come about? Um, well, Vladimir Klitschko, he's had, uh, he's had the all clear from the doctor, I think, um, earlier on this morning. And, um, you know, the fight's, the fight's been put back on, so we're all good to go. And is there any news on if that will be pay-per-view or... Yes, I understand this, uh, it will be pay-per-view. Okay. Is it is it likely for there to be like the same sort of setup that they had before where there was going to be an English undercard and then it would go out? Or do you reckon it would just be a purely uh, Dusseldorf-based show? I think it's looking like a purely Dusseldorf-based show now. It's uh, I don't think there's going to be an English undercard. I think it's just going to be the main event and the undercard over there in Germany. Okay. Um, and also, I see that he's been jogging every day now. Uh, seven yep. o'clock in the morning, you can meet up with him and go jogging with the champ himself. That's good. That's good for the fans, obviously. Again, people didn't like him at first, but now it's, he's turning everyone over, it seems. Everyone's going. People are traveling two and three hours in the morning to get to get there just to go for a jog with him. So that's, uh, it's, that's good for his profile, of course. Well, it is, you know, he's, you know, Tyson is not the person like uh, you think he is or what perception he gives out. You know, he is, he is quite a nice, genuine fella. And um, obviously, we spoke to you before, but um, Eddie Chambers' fight is, is took place now. He, he stopped the guy in the second, was it the second round? Uh, yeah, second or th- I think third round, I think. Yeah, second or third round. So, uh, again, he's obviously another win under his belt, uh, moving on to bigger and better things. Hopefully a shot with Deontay Wilder could materialise in the near future. Um, yeah. How do you see that one going if he was to fight Wilder? I think Eddie Chambers is very underrated. I, I can see Eddie Chambers. At- I-, I probably think Eddie Chambers right now is the best in America. Yeah. At this present time, I think he's a uh, he's a very underrated fighter, and I think he, he definitely deserves his shot. Last couple of things I've got to say, Peter. Um, obviously, you know it seems that every every fight, every big fight. I mean, how many how many opponents have pulled out now against Fury? I'm mean, like you know big fights. I'm not including like your Joey Abels, people that he was fighting on the build up to Chisora, but obviously, you know, Hay pulled out. Uh, it's happened. It's happened uh, four times. He had two pullouts with David Day. <coughs> He's had a pullout with Chisora, which got rescheduled, and now the now this latest one with uh, Vladimir. Does it does it affect him? I mean, does it affect him mentally at all? I mean, I know it's happened. It has happened, like you say, four times now. Is it like? Oh God, you know, does he? Can he? Can he pick himself up and go again? Because I know he's a very strong character. How does it affect him mentally if it does? Um, to be honest, he's uh, this time it doesn't seem to affect him at all. You know, he's um, he's been positive. He's uh, kept to his training. We had a good uh, conversation about it, and he agreed with everything I said. And um, that's it. You know, he's he's been totally focused this time. His mind's in a good place. He's enjoying himself, and um, like I said, I give him the news today, and he was he was over the moon. So it's not it's not affected anything, to be honest. We're we're looking to get uh, Jonathan Banks on the show a little bit later. Um, any message for, for for Jonathan or his camp? Well, Jonathan's a class trainer. You know, he's, he's a very very nice guy. He's a class act himself. 
Um, I've got the greatest respect for their camp, you know, and obviously Vladimir Klitschko, you know, it's, um, you know, this is a, this is a sport. For me, it's not about bad-mouthing anyone. It's about giving ultimate respect where it's due. Vladimir is the undisputed world champion. And we're here to try and uh, do our best to take it off him, but this is boxing. Everybody does the best he can. We're all in the same business, so you know, full respect to them and everything else. So that's it. No hard feelings at all. Very well said. All right, Pierre. Well, uh, thank you very, very much for coming on at such short notice. I mean, literally, we spoke. We spoke thank about you, ten minutes ago. You're welcome. We spoke about no ten problem. minutes ago, and then you're in straight away. So thank you very much for that. I wish you the best, and we'll probably speak to you one time uh, just before the fight sometime. Yeah, thank you very much. God bless. Bye-bye. You too, thank Peter. You. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so we've come back and a really, 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 really big week weekend, should I say, of fights last week. Um, where should we start? Where should we start? I think we can start a little show. Well, it's not a little show, but there's only one fight on the bill that, the, that we were uh, bothered about. This is in Milan, Italy. Paulie Malinagi got a unanimous decision win over Laszlo Fasekas. Um, eight round fight it was. Paulie, <clears throat> basically, it was it was a shutout. He uh, won every round. So obviously, hopefully, Paulie moves on to something bigger in the near future. I ask, what do you see? How bright is his future now? I mean, I know that his his punch power is not. You know, it's not it's not supersonic. He doesn't put a lot of people away, but he, you know, he fought this guy Laszlo Fazekas, who many thought that he was just gonna probably get a knockout. You know, he didn't get that knockout. He managed to beat him on points. Fair enough, he won every round. But at his age now, he couldn't get him out of there. It was an eight rounder. Can he? Can he come back on the world stage? I think he can come back on the world stage. Everyone knows <clears> about <throat> Paulie Malinaji. He's got the problem. With, the thing with Paulie, he's got a heart to fight. No matter what, he'll step in the step in the ring with the big names. So I I reckon he'll have a couple of a couple of fights before he retires. Before he hangs up the gloves, yeah. Okay, um, we will move on to the show in Wembley. Frank Bullioni obviously headlining the bill. Now I watched this show. Uh, I watched every every fight that they they put they they televised. Um, we we'll start with Frank Bullioni, of course. The guy. The guy just showed a tremendous heart, you know. To be honest, he he was a big underdog going in. Uh, Chudinov was so strong. Even though Frank looked in tremendous shape, which he was. He was in tremendous shape. His stature, when he was standing next to Chudinov at the weigh-in, he looked like he... I mean, he was a much bigger guy. You know, he looked huge next to Chudinov. But Chudinov... You know, he's such a strong, strong, strong guy. So accurate. He doesn't, I wouldn't say he's a massive puncher, but he hits hard enough to keep you at bay, to make you, you know, to for you to realise he has got a bit of power there. He's got enough power to keep you at bay and, uh, you know, to move you around the ring. He was walking uh, Bullioni down, but every time it looked like Bullioni was sort of on the verge of being, I don't want to say being stopped, but on the verge of, he, you know, he was taking a bit of a beating. Just when you thought, oh, I'm not sure about this. Could the referee jump in? Bullioni just comes back with a combination, and it was just, it was a great fight. It really was a great fight. Um, it was a lot, it was a much better fight than most people anticipated. Uh, everyone on social media was talking about it, and it's a shame, really, because Bullioni lost uh, unanimously. A lot of people thought he was going to get stopped in the first or second round, but um, like I say, tro he showed tremendous heart. If you haven't watched it, you've got to watch it. It, it was it was brilliant, and I'm guided for him because a, a very good guy, very nice guy for the sport, very, uh, very, very nice guy. And where does he go from here now? I mean, Chudinov was viewed as one of the weakest champions, um, if any, at the super middleweight uh, division. And I just don't know what what Bullioni's going to do. But what I did notice after the fight, Bullioni uh, was asked about where does he go from here, and he literally said, "Oh, it's back to the drawing board." He didn't seem to be um, heartbroken. I mean, he, he was heartbroken, obviously, but he didn't seem like he was going to hang up his gloves or anything like that. I do think he's going to bounce back, but will he be able to capture a, a belt? At world level, I'm not too sure. What's your views on that, Ayaz? What no I reckon problem. is, with, with, when a fighter loses, they should 
obviously they're going to feel bad about this stuff, but with with someone like Frank Bilioni, he's going to obviously come uh, climb his ladder back to the top. So I reckon in the future he'll get another title shot and hopefully he can win it. Yeah, hopefully he can. Uh, I'm going to read out some of the re- results from the Wembley card. Uh, some fights that we're not going to go into huge detail on, but uh, there was a clash. Gary Corcoran against Rick Skelton. Both of these guys had a 13 and 0 record. Somebody's O had to go. Gary Corcoran moves on to 14 and 0, whilst Rick Skelton now has one blemish on his record, 13 and 1. This was a 10 round uh, points uh, points decision. Um, Gary Corcoran. Got the victory. Ryan Walsh um, managed to win a split decision against Samir Muniemni. I'm not I'm not sure if I've got that. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got that bang on. But uh, that was for the vacant British featherweight title. Louis Petit. He actually got stopped in the uh, TKO in the 11th round by Bobby Jenkinson. Now, Louis Petit was a huge, huge uh, favourite for this. Bobby Jenkinson pulled an upset off in the 11th round. Again, that's for the vacant Commonwealth uh, Super Bantamweight title. So, Bobby Jenkinson, a uh, huge, huge underdog. Like I say, they were saying, uh, I heard somewhere that um, there was more... It was more chance of Bullioni winning the world title than Bobby Jenkinson beating Louis Petit, but the bookies were wrong here. Uh, moving on to the next fight, Armit Patterson, eighth round stoppage of Juji Unigyadze. Again, not too sure on the pronunciation, but Amit, Armit Patterson now moves up to 16 and 0. Bradley Skeet with a third round knockout over Mark Thompson for the WBO. European world weight title. Bradley Skeet got a few defences of that title now. We previewed that last week and we actually thought that it was going to probably be a close fight. So uh, we got that pretty wrong. Chisora. Oh my gosh. Uh, it went the 10 rounds, um, three, 10 three, three minute rounds. So half an hour absolutely wasted. Uh, Chisora stepped in against Marcelo Luis Nascimento. Uh, Marcelo Luis Nascimento was a guy who Eddie Chambers fought, if you remember, back in November last year, November 2014, at the Blue Water Shopping Centre. And uh, it was an eight-round contest, and and Eddie Chambers couldn't get him out of there. Derek Chisora couldn't get him out of there, but he seemed to be taking Chisora's shots, and Nascimento was firing back as well. And, uh, I mean, do you think do you think Chisora can, can, can come back to world stage? I mean... Obviously, there's arguments that, you know, he was a good European champion. He defended his European title a few times. He lost it to Tyson Fury, of course. Um, You know, do you think he can go on for anything more than a European title? Or do you think he's just set for European title level now, Ayaz? I reckon reckon he can still get back into the uh, centre stage. He's got, um, he's got, like, he can fight the likes of David Price. He can fight the likes of Huey Fury. He can even fight Deontay Wilder in the future. I reckon Chisora, he's got very good experience in the ring, so I reckon he can, he can have a couple of more big fights. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, um, Chisora, I mean, the guys you just reeled off there, uh, Huey Fury, six foot six, uh, Deontay Wilder, six foot seven. Who was the other guy you said? Uh, Price, six foot eight. These guys, um, you know, Ch- Chisora is considered a small heavyweight. To be honest, I don't think he'd really have a chance with those guys. But I'm not sure about David Price because we don't really know what what's going on for him mentally. Obviously, with a knockout loss to Erkan Tepper, um, I mean, I'm not sure. But I think that I think Chisora is pretty much done at world level. If I'm honest, um, I think he should go for the European title. I think he should get a rematch with Robert Hellenius, a guy who, you know, got the nod in Finland, if I'm correct, over Chisora, when Chisora pretty much blatantly won the fight. He was robbed there. Um, But yeah, I think he should try to push for the rematch. Moving on to the next fight on the bill, Romeo Romel got a points win over Chris Attaway in eight rounds. Uh, Jamie Kavanagh, points win against Ronaldo Mora. Uh, Edis Hussein with a six-round points win over Alex Phillips. Boy Jones was on the card, of course, for four-round fight. He was in against Antonio Horvatic. Antonio Horvatic was the guy that 
um, Mitchell Smith knocked out pretty, pretty horrifically at York Hall. Uh, I think it was earlier this year. Um, yeah, Boy Jones won on points four round in the four round contest. Billy Long was on the card, um, making his second pro fight, and he won his fight over a four a four round contest. Of course. Um, Deontay Wilder, well, did you catch any of that fight, uh, uh, Ayaz, the Wilder fight? Um, yeah, I did. I saw him. Was it the 11th round where you stopped him? 11th round he stopped Johan Duapas. Yeah, talk about that fight for me. I thought, to be honest, like Johan Duapas, no one was really, no one really knew who this, fight, uh, who this guy was. And I thought, right, okay, Deontay Wilder is going to actually stop him. Early in the off, Deontay Wilder was going to knock him out. But to be honest, this guy actually gave it to him and took him all the way to the 11th run. But obviously, Deontay Wilder, with the size and the build, and he actually, he actually stopped him, and then Wilder actually stopped him in the 11th round. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Deontay Wilder is very much still an unknown quantity. Um, I thought, everybody thought that, that he was going to stop Duapas early in the fight, but he seemed to go pretty, you know, he seemed to go, the rounds were passing by, and it just seemed like it was going to be a points, a comfortable points win. But, um, yeah, he, he stops him in the 11th round. Uh, down the card, Charles Martin, a knockout artist heavyweight, stepped in against Vicente Sandez. Charles Martin with a... Uh, TKO victory in the third round. Um, Sanders was down in in the second round and the third round, and uh, the contest was waved off. Charles Martin, he's now 22 and 0 with the one draw. Prospect for the future. Remember his name. Uh, Andrej Warzik was on the card. He stopped uh, Mike Shepard uh, in the third round. And then moving all the way over to Tachi Palace Hotel and Casino in California, where we was talking about Andy Ruiz Jr. Uh, he was fighting Joel Godfrey. Joel Godfrey with a record of 17 wins and 14 losses. And Andy Ruiz Jr. couldn't get him out of there. It was only an eight-rounder. But uh, he picks up another win, 25-0. and 0. And uh, I think that's it for last week's fights. Um, any news in the week you want to talk about, Ayaz? Any news in the week? Any yeah, news in the week? I heard this week um, in the news, I heard Amir Khan calling out, telling Kel Brook to step up and fight the likes of Timothy Bradley and Marcus Maidana in, um, in order to build his profile and have a big fight in 2016. How do you think he would fare against Maidana and, and Bradley uh, Brook? Brooke, well, Maidana, we all know him in his experience. Like he's a he's a very tough fighter, right? He's 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 fought the likes of Amir Khan. He's fought the likes of Floyd Mayweather. So I reckon um, he'll give Kel Brook a tough fight. But I, I I reckon Kel will nick it. Yeah, I think uh, Kel's a lot more clinical, um, accurate, uh, better boxer all round. Um, you know, and his experience is growing now. Obviously, Maidana, you know, he can go in the trenches. He's a dog fighter. You know, he's a pressure fighter. He swings in at, at crazy angles. He, you know, he's a he's a real he's a real he's a guy that you put in there. You, no one looks great against Maidana, to be honest. Khan didn't look great against Maidana. Uh, Mayweather in the first fight didn't look great against Maidana. In the second fight, Mayweather worked him out and managed to win a little bit easier, in my opinion. But if you look at any of Maidana's fights, he, he doesn't get beaten easily. How do you see that fight going, uh, Kel Brook against Tim Bradley, Ayaz? Um, I reckon it'll be, it'll be a very good fight. It'll be a very close fight, right? Because obviously, Bradley, we know we know Bradley, right? He's fought the bigger opposition, the likes of one Manuel Marquez, he's fought the likes of uh, Manny Pacquiao. But I reckon, in my opinion, with Kel's punching power, accuracy, and obviously, in my opinion, I reckon he's a probably one of the best defensive fighter. Um, I reckon he'll, I reckon he'll uh, nick it in the last round on points. I mean, 
Brooke, Brooke, obviously, again, he's still a little bit, I don't want to say an unknown quantity, but Brooke is like, you know, he's got the win over Porter. He shocked, he shocked a lot of people with that win. Um, ever since then, he's fought uh, Frankie Gavin. You know, I think that was pretty much an easy fight. He's fought Jojo Dan. We haven't really seen him against enough um, top 10, you know, real world contenders. But um, if he were to step in there against Tim Bradley, it is a tough fight. And um, to be honest, I wouldn't know where to put my money. I want to say Kel Brook, but Bradley is, I mean, he is so good. And again, he's a, his style is so awkward, you know, like not very much power. But um, he, he really can make the fight ugly. But then again, he can really make the fight exciting. Obviously, okay. if you've seen his fight with Provodnikov, his fights with Pacquiao, um, you know. So I, I'm not too sure about that fight. It'll be close. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the show is called Preview and Review. So we have to review the forthcoming fights of the weekend Friday night. We have Oval McKenzie. Uh, stepping in to fight Victor Emilio Ramirez. This fight is taking place uh, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, Oval McKenzie was only given 11 days to prepare for this fight. Only given 11 days. But he was in good shape anyway, as always. You know, he's always in good shape, Oval. And um, I, I re- it's a really, really close fight. It's for the IBF world title. Um, how do you see this one going, Ayers? Do you know much about his opponent, uh, Victor Victor Emilio Ramirez? Record is 22 wins and two losses. I don't know much about his opponent, right? But obviously, like you said, about his, um, his record. But I reckon in 11 days notice to have a fight for an IBF title. Oh, that's very short to be honest. But if he's put the work, yeah, if he's put the training in before, I re- and and he he, he tries his hardest in the fight. I reckon hopefully he should get the title. Yeah, and also another thing about this fight, um, Oval McKenzie, big big puncher. Um, Victor Emilio Ramirez has never been stopped, but. Um, We've all seen what Oval can do when he lands. When he lands, because um, I've, I've seen him put out the likes of um, Tony Conquest, the likes of John Lewis Dickinson. Obviously, they're not world title level, but you know the guy can crack. And if Oval lands on pretty much anyone in the in the you know in the, in the in the cruiserweight division, he's in for a chance of winning the fight because he, he's got a lot of power. Again, his record, his record is really horrible, to be honest. It's 25 wins, 12 losses. But that really doesn't represent, you know, the momentum that he carries at the moment. Obviously, he hasn't lost for two years. He lost against against Enzo Macronelli. But also, the fight before that, he beat Enzo Macronelli. So, he hasn't lost outright since 2011, which was to Tony Bellew. But um, I really hope he can do it. You know, the more belts, the merrier that are brought back to the UK. And I wish him all the best. Hopefully, we will be getting him on the show sometime next week. Um, But, yeah, I'll be be tuning in. Anything to add on that, Ayaz? No, all I've got to say is good luck to Oval McKenzie. Yeah, we all hope he does it. Um, Okay, we've got... The matchup on the weekend between Lucas Matisse, Victor Postel. <laughs> I, as I know you're going to probably want to uh, start on this one. Uh, yeah, talk about this fight for us. All I've got to say, this fight is going to be a war. We know Lucas Matisse, right? Every fight he ha- every fight he has is always exciting, no matter what. I, I remember watching his last fight against Ruslan Provodnikov. My one, that was probably has to be the fight of the year. With this fight. You- yeah, I can see hopefully winning the belt and I reckon in my opinion fighting Manny, Manny Pacquiao next there's been rumours about that wow um, wow yeah that would be a big fight obviously uh, Lucas Matisse coming into this contest with a record of 37 and 3 37 wins 34 by knockout um, Victor Postel unbeaten 27 wins, 11 knockouts, um, 27 and 0. 
Um, again, it doesn't carry much power, Victor Postel, but a good all-round boxer. And uh, again, this is for the WBC World Super Lightweight title, or as you may call it, as I call it most of the time, um, light welterweight, 140 division. Um, yeah, Victor Postel, to be honest, he's one of those fights, if he can box Matisse, I can see Postel probably winning on points. But if Matisse lands on <laughs> his punch, is just incredible, isn't it? You know, we've seen him knock out the likes of Lamont Peterson. You know, he's he's got ferocious power in his in his in his right hand, and um, he he really can crack. And an underrated boxer himself, which is what also gives a little bit of a twist on this fight. He, you know, I'm not saying that Victor Postel could outbox Matisse completely because Matisse, like I say, he's an underrated boxer and uh, he can definitely crack. So if my money's on points, I've got to put it, I've got to give it to Postel. If it's by knockout, then I'm certainly giving it to Lucas Matisse. Moving over to Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we're only going to talk about one fight on the card because only one fight is relevant. Mr. AB, about billions, ass beating Adrian Broner. Um, Adrian Broner, I remember not too long ago, had an undefeated record himself, but now we see him with 30 wins, two losses. Those two losses, obviously, to uh, Maidana, who we spoke about earlier in the show, and most recently to Sean Porter. He steps in against Khabib Alak... I really can't say this guy's name. Khabib Alakverdiev. I hope I've got that right. 19 and 1. Um, again, not much punching power um, in his opponent, uh, Verd- Alakverdiev. Um, he's only got the nine knockouts in 19 fights, but this is a big fight. Uh, he's coming off the back of a loss as well. Um, Alec Verdiev, he's coming off a loss to Jesse Vargas. That's his one, that's his one loss, but this fights for the vacant WBA, uh, world super lightweight title again, super lightweight. Also the same thing as, Light welterweight. Uh, if Broner wins this fight, he becomes a four weight world champion. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Ayaz? Wow, that's 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 gonna be that's, that's amazing. I reckon. To be honest, with this fight, I reckon Broner is going to easily win it. When he when he stepped in when he stepped in the foot in at the one at the top one four seven division, right? The problem with Broner was he was for his weight, yeah, and height. He's not big enough to fight the likes of Porter. The likes of when he fought Porter. Um, he didn't do much in that fight. And when Porter beat him, he fought Maidana. Maidana was big enough. I reckon if he stays a light, light well to wait, I reckon uh, uh, he can rule that division. Yeah, um, another thing. Um, they're both coming off of losses, obviously. Uh, Broner lost to Porter this year um, back in June, June the 20th this year. And I've just noticed that Alak Verdiev has been out of the ring for 18 months. Uh, he was he lost on a 12 round unanimous decision, but it was pretty close uh, bet- uh, with Jesse Vargas. So um, yeah, a bit of ring rust probably. Uh, 18 months out the ring, you know. So, but he's a southpaw, so you never know. But um, I think I think Broner will probably win and uh, possibly knock him out. Obviously, this is again everybody thinks that Broner was excellent at lightweight. This is uh, one. He's just five pounds up. I'm not sure um, if it's been if it's been made at a catch weight or anything like that. But it is for the 140 title, and uh, Broner was excellent at 135. So. I'm pretty sure that, um, again, these guys are smaller. When he did move up to welterweight, 147, he, uh, yeah, he wasn't able to, wasn't able to carry that power up there, but he's back down now and we'll see. And uh, another thing, I'm, we've obviously, everybody's seen the pictures of Broner, the way he balloons up in between fights. Um, you know, we've seen him looking 
looking really, really, really heavy. He almost looked like a like a cruiserweight. One picture I saw of him. So getting down to this weight again, you know, after going up to welterweight, that could take something out of him as well. So again, it is pretty intriguing, but. I have to say I can't go against A B here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that concludes it for this show. Um, good luck to Oval McKenzie uh, tonight. Good luck to Matisse, Brona, all the other guys that are fighting tomorrow night. Uh, no UK shows on TV, unfortunately. Um, hopefully... We can all get you to come back next week and tune in for our preview and review show free. Wish you all the best. Good luck over the weekend, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much.